Hello. Good hey, afternoon. we're back. Happy Wednesday. Woo. It's been a while. It has. It has. That's yeah, okay. I feel out of practice. A little. And Julie was pumping us up this morning. We had to like really. Oh, I know. We got a lot really to live show up to off here today. So yikes. I know. I watched that and I was like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. We'll so make it good. I'm just gonna say this dynamic duo was like a challenge. You know how we give Julie a pack of stuff and surprise her with it and. Mm -hmm. And she a, creates on Monday uh, nights on the stuff? fly. Yeah. We didn't have to create on the fly, so that part didn't exist. But we were given a pack of stuff from Elizabeth Craft Designs to play with and see what see what happened. And that's what it was. So everybody likes a challenge. Yeah. So Julia gave us this stamp. It's called the Let's Decorate. This die called sealed the Sealed Pocket. pocket. Which is really cute. Um, we already obviously used some of this, but this is the Bell Rose Pink Paper Collection. And some soft finish cardstock, which I have to say I've now fallen in love with. Which I hadn't used before. I had not It was a great I opportunity. And I created a ton of stuff because yeah. I really love this cardstock. I stock. actually, it says yeah. soft finish and it is soft. It's like, ooh, I want to cuddle that. Yeah. It's quite <laughs> Yeah, so of course you can't tell, you know, via this. But you can see in person just a really small texture to it, and then it has a smooth backside. Yeah. So it just gives a really cool effect if you're yeah. ink blending. But I also like that it's super durable for when you're die cutting. Yeah. Um, you want to form it, embossing folder, that kind yeah. of stuff too. Yeah. And it does say, um, it does mention the two sides. So they're obviously encouraging you to mm -hmm. use both sides. They're not saying one side is better than another. It's just multi-purpose. Yeah. Uh, used with ink markers and other mediums. So it's like, ooh, what is that going to mm -hmm. do? So I played and played and played. So I was on, I had to use something not Elizabeth Crafts first because I just had it in my stash and um, was just in love with it. But I did want to show these because this I did use that soft finish cardstock. Now, I mostly didn't use anything else Elizabeth Crafts, but look how well that stood up. So and you have a lot, a lot of mixed media on there. there. There's sprays, there's m magicals, there's paints. Yeah, and distress oxides. Like I have it all on there. So all I did when I was done and they were dry was I just put something heavy on them. And look, they're not really warped. They're, I mean, you cannot add water to paper and expect it to come out flat. Exactly. I am finding this incredibly impressive. Yeah. So I just wanted to show that for the sake of how robust this cardstock is. And again, so it's Elizabeth Craft Designs in this week's Dynamic Duo uh, sale online under Elizabeth Craft Designs. It's called Soft Finish Cardstock and there's 25 sheets in there Yeah, for $17.75. Yeah. So also an amazing deal. I'm While picking one up today it. because yeah. I played with it and I have to give it back. Yeah. So and I'm thinking for all the die cutting I'm doing for Christmas cards because I also like to add some dimension to them by um, a little bit of yeah folding them a bit and, and yeah forming them. Oh yeah, so this will be the, gorgeous. Like you yeah. said, it holds your leaves, your so poinsettias, swell. that kind of yeah. stuff. So, anyways, that's what that is. Some sauce. Yeah. What did you do? What did I do? Well, let me go back and in the past I had done. I believe it was for, oh no, it was design team project, I think. And another curated package from Julia was um, some sheets from this Reminiscence Book 5, the Book 5. So we still have some of this one in stock. Yeah. Um, which these are amazing. I love these. If you do any junk journaling. Well, any scrapbooking actually anything, too, because I don't really junk journal. No, but, you don't. But I just fell in love yes. because of the versatility. Like, it's... It's like every page you can cut apart or not. And then there's two yeah. weights, so it repeats at a lower weight. I can never remember the numbers. But okay, so there's 32 double sided in 120 gram, which is, uh, I would say, a folding paper weight. It's like, like a 65? Somewhere around there. Maybe even an ounce? A, okay. Yeah, maybe even a smidge lower. Oh, okay. Um, but then the 32 double sided seat sheets and 250, that's probably around an 80, wouldn't you say? Probably. But it's just so sweet because you've got like cardstock level. Beautiful patterns. And then it repeats again, yeah. double sided in this paperweight. Actually, you know, I think you're right, 60. I can't remember. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not very good at that. But um, what? I just, like I said, there's stuff in there like you can cut, fussy cut stuff out if you need it, but there's great backgrounds, foregrounds, like everything's here just to play, play, play. 
and all there happily in a book. So I just get a sleeve or a bag and I put the whole book in there and I start cutting into it yeah. and then all the scrap pieces just kind of stay in there and then I put the whole thing on my shelf and if I feel like collaging, this is the book I grab. Mm -hmm. So like you were saying, for your junk journal, for your art journal, yeah. um, patterns and books yeah. like this are great, but I also use pieces of it to create a background for a scrapbook layout. And this one's a little warpy. Yes, I didn't flatten it out, but I did apply or attach all the papers with uh, matte medium too. So you also kind of get this nice slick finish to it. But I also did that because I knew I wanted to do some pace uh, through stencil over top. Yeah. It so that was super incredible. Fun. Yeah. So I just, I tore pieces, scored them, layered them on. Anyways, that was, that was that one. Really like that book. I love those books. Yeah. So I wanted to grab that. That was a previous sample. We do have some other samples in store, uh, things we've created using a lot of the Elizabeth Craft items. But I see something really cute right there. Which one? Which one? This, Which one? Is this so one? Cute. Okay, this is a class I taught quite some time ago. So I, Elizabeth Crafts, um, yeah, she may discontinue, but she doesn't discontinue very quickly. So if you ever see something, you can be like, hey, we might be able to still get that in. But we still have these from that class that I taught. And I think what the problem is, is you pick it up and you go, Oh my gosh, that price point. So it's $72.25 for this pack. But listen, you get a full huge die in there, a stamp set, an idea page, plus the binder rings. So that would help you get a start on making something cute like this. So I did this as a class some time ago with using this VW, VW bus, the iconic camper man. So cute. And each... You know, I could cut each page the same and have it all be the same. I didn't. I just sort of mixed and matched it up. Um, but super fun. And I used some 49 in Market Beach Day. Sort of had that beachy, cappy thing. But you could use any paper. Like, I think um, I think the one thing that Elizabeth Crafts is the versatility of her stuff. Yeah. Like, like here's, I'm so thinking about our journaling, blah, 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 but I mean, it's, and I know that a lot of our stuff is marketed towards planner, um, but I mean, really any of our stuff yes. that we love to do. It's her totally, stuff it's, absolutely, it's totally uh, versatile. And I think a lot of us do think planners because a lot of their items are um, planner. Are, are planner related which is fabulous but also can be used for anything but don't forget the planners people we have a beautiful planners um, these cute little leather things they've got the rings different sizes you can customize the covers like Nancy's done here what? I know I know I did I did so I actually painted I used a die and I layered all these flowers all over it and then I painted it and gessoed it up and made it totally my own um, I love that. Yeah, so it's neat. fun. It's fun. Yeah. I still haven't figured out how to use it. I just, it sits in my craft room waiting for me to decide. But decide what yeah. to fill it with. Yeah, so then you just can get any of our planner pages. And you can see I used the reminiscence book to cut out my planner pages. So I've got these little dividers and I can just awesome. add as I go and fill it up. Yeah, she's got so many cute details in her dies too. Like quite often you'll get a reinforcement set. Yeah. So fun. And so many of the dies and the sleeves all made to fit perfectly yeah. in there. Yeah. It's great. Um, another thing that I really love about Elizabeth Craft Designs, paper pack. So like uh, Nancy showed, we were uh, given the one paper pack to work with, which is a beautiful assortment of colors. So that's Bella Rose pink. Like I said, don't mind the corner. I did cut that out. Um, but it gives you an you idea, a sample. background paper on the other side. Oh, it's so great, right? right? Use everything. Um, of all the patterns you get in there. It's an awesome weight, it's easy to cut, it's easy to fussy cut, die cut, whatever. I love them, how they match like that. So some of the newer ones, like this beautiful one, Rustic Winter. Like, look at these, it'd be great for card backgrounds, your page backgrounds, all of it. I love them. And great price, $19.25. And you get 12 double-sided sheets, so you get 24 designs in these packages. Grungy Wood, that's also a fairly new so one. Fun. I love this. I too. love Grungy Wood in a lot of things. You could even turn that into like some Christmas kind of patterns and whatnot too. Those would be great scrapbook or pages too. Summer pages, yep. Yeah. Oh, anything, like yeah. if you're at the dock. Ooh. New Horizons. Oh, that's this so bright one. and cheery. Yeah, right? 
Yeah. Let, let's remind ourselves what season we're in. We seem, we seem to keep jumping ahead. Everything's like Christmas related right yeah, now. No, no. We've just hit September. So, yeah. I'm you're like fall. me. Well, no, I still want to like step back a bit. Take a still step want, back. Still I want, want a bit of summer. Summer vibes, right? Or even okay. document the summer memories at least. Well, you know what? We have time. Uh, let's take it. Time. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? And thanks so much, everybody, for being here. I see we've got lots of people watching. Thank you guys for all your great compliments. Yeah, about so our projects. Gorgeous. Those are amazing. Okay, so what did we create? And then we'll turn the camera down. What did we create with uh, what we were given? What did Julia curate for us, and what did we do with it? All right. So if you remember, we had the Bella Rose pink. We had the soft finish cardstock. The sealed pocket die and a stamp set and this let's celebrate stamp set so that was what we were given and this is where i went and i say a challenge it's not so much a challenge because it's not products i don't use it's products i use oh, i didn't mean it as a challenge in that i was like out of my comfort, out of my zone. comfort yeah. zone i just meant that it was like here, here. make something and, it's and like, we were like well okay, okay then <laughs> we got this yeah, <laughs> yeah we do so the, i made an art journal page so I have been totally into collage and I thought when I opened up the Bella Rose pack I noticed quite a bit of cuttable paper so I know you have a nice stack going here and I don't want to mess with that I'm not sure what you're doing but are you, you can cut it no no okay so when I went through the stack of paper see that bingo card that's where I got that from and then I cut up the tags and I there we go so I Let's see. So the bingo card and all Perfect. the tags. And then there was a paper. We both ended up using it. That's so funny. But there was a paper with the word journal on the edge. I don't think we have, there's only two of each, isn't there? Yeah, we might have, might have oh. used it up. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Which made me laugh. But anyway, so I, yeah. so I cut into the papers and thought of them in smaller bits. So even though it was 12 by 12, I thought, how can I bring the bring collage into this. So I cut up all the bits and pieces that I would like to put into a collage. I made the sealed pocket. It's right here, that die. It's out of vellum. So what I thought when I saw the die, here, I'm just gonna quickly show you the die again, was that this was actually a flap for an envelope. And yes, you could do that. I could score it and put it in and make it a flap for an envelope-like look. But it's actually, when I went on the Elizabeth Craft Designs for a smidge of getting started inspiration. Ideas, I did the um, same thing. So. I realized very quickly that they had it as a tag. So what I did was I cut the tag out of one of the pieces of paper and layered it with vellum. And on the inside, you can barely see it, but I've got some 49 and Market laser cuts in there. Brilliant. And then Nancy. I ran my sewing machine around it and quickly discovered my sewing machine needs some work because it was making very weird noises at me. But anyway, that gives me something. And I, I just kept thinking of, for this this whole look and the ephemera, I just kept thinking of um, what you'd find in somebody else's books, like pressed flowers and bingo cards mm -hmm. and, you know, those sorts of things. Little when, bits. Little bits, right? So I was bringing that together. So I was putting all this into the pocket and then um, all the little tickets around. And shortly after we're finished talking, I can talk about how I created this background because you can see that's where I used the stamp. The stamp came mm -hmm. in there. It's very tone on tone, but I'll demonstrate how I did that. Great way to add a bit of um, dimension and interest to your pages. Just you putting betcha. some, remind, remembering to use our stamps on our pages as well. Right. right. Okay, what did I create? So I created a layout. Uh, with the pieces that Julia curated for us. And of course, I had to use my beautiful subject, Marley. Adorable! I know. I love that dog. So I just made, and because the pages, the papers in their collection packs don't need a lot to them they to don't. create an interesting background page. So my, this is a paper. This was a full sheet of paper, which I just love. I did trim it down to get um, a, I like to sort of balance out my layouts with a bit of dark. Yes, so something I, with a bit of black around it. A little black it. or dark is Yeah, and then amazing. I just trimmed off a piece from another one. I used my um, edge distressor to give it just a different little rustic feel to it. 
layer it in a different coordinating piece. Mm -hmm. And out of the um, die, I also created a pocket with some of the little tags nice. um, in there. And I thought it'd be a perfect spot to add some journaling. Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. Added some ribbon, some ink to, inking around the edges. But so for my pocket, I did use a piece of the pattern paper that was in the kit. And I backed it with a piece of vellum. So where you created your pocket out of vellum, <laughs> mine has vellum in behind it. And then just created my pocket that way. I found the pocket really cute and then I thought it'd be really good on a card, put a gift card in there too. I love this die. You know, it's funny. It's one of those things again, sometimes you need to take a minute. You need to use it to realize how this awesome, is how cool. awesome it really is. And I just fell in love yeah. with it. And yeah. even see these if i had a little bit more time i had to get the kit to heather so she could have some time sharing is caring sharing is very very caring but i was thinking if i cut this out of vellum and then did one of those wax seals on it with some i thought that would look really cute julie on the and i are like wax seal. right yes so that would have looked really cute yeah. so yeah. watch for that maybe to be see done. that yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and then with the i have these elizabeth craft uh design duh dies leaves i do believe this is still in stock i might have to double check now that i now that i say that i think i saw so it. i die cut it out of the soft finish card stock and inked it so you could ink it before you could ink it afterwards but it picked up the ink so beautifully on this awesome love oh, this one so, so this is the one i use elegant leaves one i love oh this crud. now i'm buying it well it'd be great for christmas too or all like sorts for adding I, I greenery totally, to well anything. i mean i'm into botanicals and i did go totally with the 49 49 market but that would be great on all of the like, things 25 yeah. percent off people okay yeah so created um some dyes just Twist to kind down. of uh, form and add to my layout that way um some thickers we do have a great selection of these too just made a, a cute sweet, title we have a sweet selection we have a, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but it, as it started to come out, I had to go with it. <laughs> Studio audience is laughing. Too, yes. Good one, Nancy. You're Thank so, you. So witty. I am. Um, what else did I do here? Ah, oh, the stamp set. And how did I use that? Yeah, how'd you? Ooh. I just used some vintage photo distress oxide and just did a bit of random stamping around my layout to then add more interest to it as well. Nice. Just a great way. I, I love this kit. And it actually came together really, really easy. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but I love, I'm loving this pocket. So, so I'm super idea. remember I said that we both used the same page piece of paper. You yeah. See where that was? Oh yeah, right here. Right here. The journal word. We both obviously gravitated to that. Well, and I just liked it. So many different um, tones of colors I and patterns. Was, yeah. Yeah. It was absolutely stunning. Really, really was drawn to that. Yeah. And I used some of the tags from, that's the back. That's mm. a tag, but it's turned, so that's the background on the other side, so. Yeah, so the tag sheet's really cool, too, so that was easy to cut out, and then you get a really cool pattern on this one. Yep. Yeah. 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 So okay. easy. Uh, one thing I just want to mention about this uh, cardstock, too, after doing some more research on it, like, why is this cardstock so amazing? What are the properties? And I thought, well, number one, I, I really love the way it die cut. It cut those leaves out beautifully. It took ink really, really well. And then I thought, because it's really made for Urbana. forming, I thought, how wonderful would it be with a 3D embossing folder? So some of these 3D embossing folders, all brands, could have a tendency to crack your cardstock. It's true. So one of the things I recommend to people first off is to spritz your paper before you emboss it, just to kind of loosen those fibers. But this cardstock, I didn't necessarily need to do that because it's got like a almost like a binder strength to it. Like it just, it didn't want to pull and crack. Whatever that so, soft, whatever they're doing to create it being so soft, is just, it's pliable. It, it's just, it embossed yeah. beautifully. So that is one thumbs up for me because I use a ton of embossing folders, a lot of 3D ones. So there's lots of depth to these and it was just gorgeous. Did this come in yet? Mm -hmm. Maybe sold out. And I'm going to show this one. I'm not sure if it's sold out or coming. Uh, for Christmas, this is beautiful. I love this one. I do. Little ornaments on it. Yeah. So it just embossed. Sold out again. Sold out again. Yeah. Oops. Gorgeous. Anyways, so that was one property of it. I really, really well, you gotta move fast around yeah. here. You gotta move fast. Yeah. Okay. And I think Nancy's gonna show us a little something and then I'll show a little something. So, All right. Yes, yes thank you. Julia is going to... Nice yes. for making it's flowers. It's very Absolutely. nice for making flowers, for sure. Oops. Okay, so what I wanted to show 
was how I kind of created the background for my art journal. Um, super simple. Don't know where I put the page already. Oh, it's right here. I don't know. I have a little block if you want to use this. I for... do need a block. Okay. okay, so I wanted to show how I kind of... In fact, there's actually quite a few stamps in there. They, they really created texture, but they don't stand out. They're not really uh, apparent when you... Um, unless you stop and look, right? But that's cool. I like that. Yes, your so, stamps are not just for your cards, people. Right? Use so them. I'm going to show how I kind of did that. Well, not just kind of. I did, did. I actually did it. Just one thing. I need this. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put down a bunch of distress. Um, whatever. I'm just trying to pick colors here. I'm not going to do the same color um, that I did. Um, mostly because I didn't bring them. That's okay. You're doing uh, something different. Yeah, and you'll get the same feeling. So mm -hmm. I'm going to start with... What do I want to use? Oh, with prize ribbon? What the heck? So I'm just going to make sure... I'm covering the page. And I'm moving it around. Woohoo! Splash on, splash on. So, so for washes, you can see that would be really sweet if you want that kind of watercolory look. And then when it dries, you still see some of the texture of this cardstock. Right? Just so cool. So I'm just kind of covering the page. If I had a spray, that would be great. I could just spray it down. I'm just kind of going with what we have right now. Being flexible. Yeah. Moving it around. And it's holding up to the water quite well. Like you see, it's not buckling. Like if, if this wasn't a mixed media friendly cardstock, it would already be really curled. 100%. Right? Yeah. So there. So that was the start. Let's see if we're plugged in. We've done this before. Yes, oh. I was prepared. Oh, Julia and Heather preparing it for me. It's the first time we tried to use the heat gun, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah first time we tried to turn it on and looked at each other as. <laughs> Thank goodness this isn't, you know, national TV. <laughs> you good? You lose it. So while she's drawing, so yeah, Elizabeth Craft Designs, stamps, dies, stencils, planners, paper packs. Am I periodically, anything? yeah, it's, it still dies, but she comes out with these like buildable characters quite often. Like the last release oh, had the caterpillar and the ladybug. So cute. The spring release, we still have uh, quite a bit of that. It has the birds, the yeah. butterflies. Yeah, they're gorgeous. Okay, so I'm not going to worry because I'm going to bring more water in. I don't necessarily want this to be super, super dry. And I need a block. a block. And here's our stamp set that we were given. So all I did was the same exact color. Put that on a block. Ink it up. And then I just stamped it. A handful of times, say, along a corner. Maybe, like, if I thought some elements were going to go here, I might go like that around an element. But I wasn't really just kind of creating a smidge of a background. Do you have a baby wipe? I can find one. I know where some exist. Okay. And I like to clean. <laughs> She's my cleaning banner. So then what I did is I actually just wet it all again. And you'll see it kind of almost looks like it um at first it brightens it but it's not going to stay because look i'm actually w wicking out some of the ink and now it's becoming more subtle so obviously different colors are going to do different things so this is quite a, st a really strong color with a light background but if i like with the with the browns i got that look right so as this dries up, I'm expecting this will sort of fade even more into the background. 
So just dry. <laughs> so that's how I kind of pushed back the stamping to be sort of a little decorative background piece is I just kind of re-wet it after stamping so that it would wick out a little bit. All right, I'm gonna keep drawing and I can show you the when final. You're done? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what I can show here. All right, just wipe it off. I just don't want to transfer Nancy's ink. No. It's a nice thing about these mats. This is the non-slip mat. We've got a splat mat under here. Perfect for your surfaces because they wipe up so easy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I was just going to do, and actually I should just get a bit of paper towel. Let's do a little ink blending and a little stamping on this cardstock. I know a lot of people ask about ink blending too because um, there is a bit of a knack to it. So I'm actually going to um, demo that. I'm going to use the textured side of this cardstock. Like I said, it just has a beautiful feel to it. And I will also use distress inks, but I'm going to use the oxides. And maybe let's do, we'll do, okay, fine, a couple fall-ish colors. Let's you do that. You go, girl. Why not, right? So there, it's pretty much dry. Just coming back quickly. You can see how kind of diffused that stamp ends up looking as opposed to you know, just a straight stamp and dry. So giving it that little spritz just kind of melds it in. Very cool, Nancy. Okay, so I'm going to do a full ink blended background here really quickly. I like to use kind of a trio of coordinating colors. I'm pretty heavy handed, so I use a heavy hand with my blender brush to pick up my ink. And then kind of starting off my page. Don't you think this is a more is better kind of scenario? Always. Yeah. More is better. More crafty products in my stash is better. All of the more. Yeah, all of the more, right? Okay. I'm laying down some ink. That's gonna be our new motto. Dynamic duo. More all is, of the more. Yeah, more, more is, is better. better. <laughs> and I'm just gonna I'm not too worried about transferring too much ink between my oxides because the colors are very similar. But I am going to take some of the color off and I'm going to go to my next color, which is now Wild Honey. And I picked up a fair amount of ink. Keeping in mind with the oxides to re-ink them on a regular basis. Yeah, I like them juicy. Juicy, yep. And start off the side and I'm going to drag in more color this way in kind of the next third of the panel here. Okay. I'm gonna bring in some more from this side. And because my hand's down here, I'm picking up more ink when I uh, run it on my ink pad and I'm depositing more ink because I'm putting the pressure on it versus there. I just find gotcha. just a tip. Okay, I'm gonna take some of that off. We'll go over here to Spice Marmalade. I'm just gonna flip it. Deposit it down. Okay, so just really, really quick. Did you pick your shirt on purpose? I, it kind of matches. No. Yeah, you have to see that when you get we go back. That was funny. She's matchy matchy. Yeah. Okay, and a lot of people ask how do you get rid of the lines? Well, I just light, lightly pick up one of the colors again. And I'm going to bring the two colors where they intersect together. Yeah. So I could pick up that same color there. But now I'm going to go back to the lightest one, which is dried marigold. I don't and know what other people over. call it, but I call that blending back. So I brought in the second color, but then I go back to my lighter color and blend it back over top. Yeah, that's blending a great back. idea. That's what I call it. Okay. And then, of course, as it dries, the colors smooth out, kind of it balance will. out a little it bit, will. too. Because they have to... They, this is a pigment property, so they take a minute. Yeah, and they kind of wick and blend on their own. So even a blend that looks really strong at first can become very subtle and soft in just an hour later. Absolutely. Okay, and I'm just going to wipe this up. I could spray it and use that ink actually on another background, but for today's demo, right. we're just going to do this. You betcha. But another thing I do love to do with my oxide inks especially on my backgrounds give it a little bit of um interest is i'm gonna grab Ooh. a spray bottle quick 
I put it away too quickly, sorry. No, I'm so sorry. So, uh, Vern is asking, have you tried the soft touch uh, with the Lisa Horton mix? So, they're there if anyone wants to. Oh! Right, right there. Yep. And I had some more panels cut. You mean these? So, you might want to repeat that. I don't know if they heard Yes, so we had a question that Julia brought to our attention because we missed it is have we used the soft ink with the fabulous Lisa Horton interference inks? I, I have not. Haven't. I haven't. Can I use one of your card panels? Yeah, you go for it. I'm okay, gonna, so I'm gonna I just, give it a go. I sprayed this panel after I ink blended it with just a little bit of water. I could um, add some heavier water drops if I wanted, but as it dries, you'll also see them uh, stand out a bit more. Okay. And with this super fun stamp set, the Let's Decorate, which is just great images. I thought we could actually make them nice focal images on this card panel too. So I'm gonna use some vintage photo. Stamp it up. And I'm just gonna kind of stamp off the edge. Okay, I'm gonna do some that's the first thing I'm going to say is I'm not sure I'd use a brush. I think there's interference inks on the picket fence things. Is that interference ink that's on Some those? Some of them, yeah. Oh, okay. The paper pouncers. And then to get the second generation of that one, I'm just going to stamp it again. And I could switch it up with the patterns of the stamps. But I'm just going to do some random. Stamping. Oh, interesting. Hope I'm not throwing you guys off. Please pay attention to this. We're, we're practicing something. Yeah. It's a true. Uh, it's a true on the fly. Yeah, on the fly. Interesting. Okay, I'm just gonna take that ink off there. These are great little stamps. Okay. okay. Throw that down here. Oh, I should have brought some gold paint. That'd be so cute. Spider that would with be some awesome. gold on there too. So that'd that be great awesome. to do. And I know they're not Elizabeth Craft Design, but a lot of you know that I love my sentiment die um, selection for card fronts. So yep. I always have a stash. Handy trick. So I recommend to all of you, if you're just watching a good show on Netflix or something, get out your sentiment dies. We have a ton. And cut away. Choose some basics. Yeah, I know. That's the twine die from uh, Spellbinders to use with my hot foil. Or my, sorry, my wax seals. So I keep a, um, a few containers like this full of sentiments ready to go because I am a card maker. So lots of times I'm just going to sit and make backgrounds. And then I'll attach a sentiment when I'm ready to send. Um, this, I know we have this one. Um, this is a Concord Ninth one, which is really cool. And even just a really great sentiment on some pop dots on something like that. Easy peasy. So it's just an ink blended background. I use that Elizabeth Craft Design uh, stamp set. Let's decorate. Do pin squish. And then I need an opinion here. What sentiment should we put on here? Anything we have, old. This is from, um, I think, the Perfect Sentiments Spellbinders, um, designed by Sam and mm -hmm. Simon Hurley. Uh, this one is a Concord Ninth one, this Take Care. The Perfect Sentiments from the Simon Hurley one for Spellbinders is probably one of my most used. I don't know, Julia's looking for it. I love it. Ooh. Oh, and the new one. Oh, that might have to come home with me today. Any good little sentiment die with a shadow. Yeah, hello, <gasps> happy birthday, best wishes, thank you, just a note. I love this one. Anyways, love sentiments, always uh, suggest them, definitely. Absolutely. Oh, everyday sentiments, yes. yes that's a good one. This is a good one. Love, love, love this one. Uh-oh. Yes. I swear the dynamic duo sells me more things than anybody else. Well, we're enablers. 
Ooh, I think I'll do thank you on there. I just have to find the U. That might take me a minute. Anyways, so yeah, I just used, could do it either way. It could be this way, that way. Oh could yeah. Could do some more splatters on the back. I think the gold splatters would be gorgeous. Or even eh? little gems in the little, <gasps> some, some bling. Oh, oh yeah. fancy. Okay. All right, so my thoughts and the soft finish cardstock. Um, the soft finish cardstock held up incredibly well to the wet techniques again. I did a dip and smoosh, so that's the one where you smoosh the pad down and spray it and then dip in. I think that held up incredibly well. The one thing you won't notice on camera is this does need to dry a little bit longer and then you'll see the interference of the pigment, right? That play of the two colors. So that's peacock tails there and it and I also think too the soft finish gives it a really totally different look than a smooth cardstock would okay this one I was experimenting between this and this so I started off so this on top and then I worked my way down to this okay so one thing I would say and I I would love to hear what Julia has to say but I didn't find it went on very well with a brush um, and I'm not sure if that's a cardstock thing or a interference inks and brush thing. Do you use these with brushes? I use them with the prism brushes, which I find the bristles a bit softer. A softer they, brush would yeah, probably be better. The yeah. Prism Studio brushes. The new Prism better. Studio brushes. So then I was playing with. Okay, how, these colors. Oh. Yeah, right. The pouncers, so these are the picket fence pouncers, and that's, if I want to put a lot on fast, I found that was the way to go. Yeah, those are I great. really, really did. Definitely. Um, but if you don't happen to have a pouncer, you can just load these up and... Pounce? Yeah, yeah. these pounce-ish. There this are gives so you many, a cleaner. so many options for the blender brushes, whether you prefer a brush, a dome foam, right, a pouncer. Right, right, right. Dome foams. See, yeah, and it's such a preference thing, and it's yeah. a comfort thing too, right? So yeah. I say to people, you probably have it in your stash. Try each one with your different inks as right. well, because exactly you'll find right. how they want to move blend right. better. Yeah. So right now, I would say the interference work inks work amazing with the soft finish cardstock. Um, how you apply it may be a bit of play. You have to play with that and find your find your fun place on yeah, that one. That's right. So yeah, so this one's Galaxy Shimmer, and I blended down into the peacock tails. And this one's straight peacock tails. And you can start to see the the change in the shimmer happening. And this one, I'm like, I'm taking that home and I'm using that with the new goth girl from Paper Artsy. Ooh, plans. Get it closer. And I do believe all of these inks are on reorder because we can seriously not keep these inks in stock. And I don't blame people. Oh, and oh, the reinkers, re yay! Because I always say, never buy an ink without the reinker. I yes. broke that rule this time because it wasn't available, but now I will. Never uh, buy an ink pad without a reinker. That's Absolutely. my rule. Absolutely. Um, it's way too painful to go back and buy the reinkers later. <laughs> so anybody, um, if if you're looking for any of the products that we have used that are out of stock, for example, the interference ink. Always go to the online store and you can uh, select notify me um, and you will be notified as soon as these products are back in stock, which Absolutely. is a great way to do and that. The, and one of the most, one of the most best ways, Heather. One of the oh, most best it ways. Yes, I know. You're on fire. Totally. Um, okay. So to assemble this card, I think Kelly just asked me about stock. Okay. What I, I was saying this is. One of my most used sentiment die sets, Simon Hurley for Spellbinders, Everyday Sentiments. It has a great why. font with a shadow. Love, love, love. Very good basics to have on hand. Can be used on a layout for anything too. Um, I am a big card maker, so I use them a lot for that, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Okay? And like I said, this is brand new, so that's getting set aside. That's, those go together, really. And I'm going to use the new Sweet Petunia Glue Press, which is also sold out once again. We sold out again today. These are also on reorder. Okay, so this little puppy has the Nouveau Glue Bottle in it. It comes with an empty one. 
Um, I have seen some questions online. Oh, so that means any glue could work in there. You could use whatever your You could use glue whatever is. glue you wanted, oh, okay. 100%. The idea is just behind the actual press in itself. Because you know some of your glue bottles, you know, they get really hard to squeeze. It's hard yep. on the hands. Yep. This has an easy squeeze system. And no, um, some of the questions I did see online were people were concerned it might create a mess, it would goop out. It has an automatic stop built in to the glue press. Oh, so that would... Like a silicone pad. So that would... So I would think that tip, would stop it from drying out, yeah, too. Stops it from drying out, stops it from oozing out. So it's a no-mess system. It's really lightweight. So I'm just going to use this, and I'm going to attach... What else? Your glue would have a spot on your table. It wouldn't get all messed oh, up in the crafter math. And your little pin wouldn't be stuck to something that you throw in the garbage. Right. Yeah, it comes out really nice and smooth. Like I said, you can control how much you want to come out to. I actually like this. I'm kind of thinking it's pretty awesome. Oh. There. Glued on my little sentiment. Thank you. Anyways. And thank you yeah. to you. That's awesome. Thanks, there. everybody, for being here today. Thank you. We appreciate your time. It's always fun to uh, be handed something to say, make something. Yep. And then share it and show it. We're always up for challenge. You betcha. Yeah. So we already have plans. We for, are ready to. Um, yeah. Two weeks from two, now. Yes. Two weeks from now is uh, September sometime. I don't know what the date oh, is. Oh, well, I was thinking, what are we doing? Oh, should we tell them? I think we should. Or should we wait? I. You just did. Good. Sizzix. 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 Which is always so fun because it's like tons of dyes and stencils and it's good stuff. like it's gonna be yeah. her show that day. I'll, uh, I'll be. Uh, <laughs> Sidekick oh, Nancy? No. Sidekick Nancy that day. That's no, okay. we love all the things. I do so. love it. There's not a thing here I couldn't work with or love, really. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we have one for after that one, but I'm not going to say it yet. Nope. We'll just concentrate on the next one. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thanks once again for being here for the Dynamic Duo demo. Yeah. All right, make sure to take advantage yeah. of the great deals. 25% off today and tomorrow. Bye, everybody.